Hey guys, and welcome to the final video in this series in which I explore the Persona 3 characters through the lens of the tarot archetypes. If you haven't yet, you may consider watching the previous parts in this series before watching this, though all of these videos are fairly standalone. So without further ado, let's jump right into the analyses. We have now arrived at the final major arcana that is given major focus within the context of Persona 3. The Death archetype is unique among all the Persona users that we have covered so far, since it is represented by two different figures, Pharos and Roji, who each symbolize the upright and reverse reading of this tarot respectively. Now, the main lesson that the Death Tarot teaches is that destruction is necessary for transformation. Sort of like how a phoenix always springs from the ashes, or how forest fires that bring death to old vegetation allows for new seed pods to open up and grow. Pharos is mostly representative of the upright Death Arcana. He is friendly and roots for the success of the MC and his friends throughout their journey, much in the same way that death shouldn't be something that is feared, that it shouldn't prevent us from pressing forward, but instead should encourage us to make the most of each opportunity. In this way, he wishes for the MC to embrace the trials and changes that come with facing each new full moon. And adding on to this, throughout his social link, Pharos constantly reminds the MC that they will always be friends. This is symbolic of the only real certainty in life, that all people will die one day. But just as the protagonist begins to enjoy life after developing bonds with Seas and his social links, Pharos learns this same lesson by living vicariously within the MC. Pharaoh shares in his Rank 9 scene that he used to view death in a very simple manner, like the blowing of the wind. However, he has gained a different perspective because the MC became his first friend. But once Pharaoh leaves, he reappears as a living, breathing human as Roji Mochizuki. It can be argued that this is due to Pharos having learned about humans through the eyes of the MC previously. Roji is initially much like Pharos in that he is friendly and generally makes the most out of the opportunities in his life, just as the Death Arcana should spur us to do. The fact that he is so opportunistic serves as one of the main reasons he gets along so well with Junpei. Though, oddly enough, unlike Pharos, Roji spends very little time with the protagonist. He even says at the end of November, as he's leaving the Seas dorm, that he finds it odd that he's there often, but he rarely runs into the MC. Perhaps it is symbolic of how the MC has once again forgotten or purposefully remains ignorant about the inevitability of death since he no longer has to encounter the life and death situations or difficult hardships that came about during each full moon during the dark hour. But, Roji develops into the perfect representation of the reverse death arcana after his battle with Aegis. In the days following, he meets with Seas to warn them about the arrival of Nyx and how there's nothing that can be done. He offers them a way out, saying that he will erase all the painful memories of the Dark Hour and the knowledge of the impending doom of the world. In this way, he shows how he has succumbed to this mentality that most people have in regards to death. That it is automatically too painful to acknowledge and that it's easier to avoid thinking about any difficulties, hardships, or painful losses. Instead, it's best to just drown all these things out and live in peaceful, ignorant bliss. Roji doesn't realize how much each of the Seas members has grown and matured due to the adversity they had to face. How the loss each member experienced gave birth to a new version of him or herself. Roji urges the MC to kill him so that Seas won't have to suffer, knowing that another painful loss is near and inevitable. 
You see, the reverse death archetype is afraid to face loss and take the actions necessary to make the most of the resulting new beginning. Roji has no hope that the fall can be avoided. However, when the MC expresses that he won't kill Roji, he returns back to the upright reading for just a bit, since he shares with C's where and when they can find Nyx to challenge her. He didn't have to do this, but he was essentially touched by C's hopeful perspectives, and so he gives them a tiny sliver of hope back before heading off for good. So, in conclusion, the Death Arcana teaches the fool that death comes to all things at some point. But that doesn't mean that we should fear or try to escape that reality. Rather, we should use that truth as a catalyst to strive ahead and live the most fulfilling lives possible, since our time is limited. Such a lesson lends itself to why I believe Persona 3 is particularly successful in conveying the concept of the fool's journey. Death always refers to the loss of something, whether it be in the physical or the metaphorical sense. Things such as the death of a loved one, the death of a dream, the death of one's physical health, and so on. In the face of such devastating losses, it's an understandable human reaction to want to shy away from getting close to other people or holding on to the hope that things will get better, since these things could be taken away or end up leaving us again. Returning to the Fool for just a bit, this very first archetype in the tarot represents that anything and everything is possible. It is symbolized by both the imagery found on the tarot card, such as a calling to take a leap of faith off the cliff, and the fact that the number of this card, zero, is symbolic of infinite possibilities. The person just has to embrace these new experiences. We all are the fool of our own journey. We begin as naive and unfamiliar with each opportunity that we encounter for the first time in our lives. But most importantly, for one to successfully complete their individual fool's journey, they must be willing to connect with people, to allow him or herself to embrace relationships with many different types of individuals, to learn various lessons about life from them. Embracing life with others and learning with them along the way, as Seas does with each other, further serves the fool on his journey to become a fully realized and wise individual. So finally, the World Arcana is a culmination of all the lessons the fool has taken away after coming to an understanding of the major tarot archetypes. Through interacting with many different kinds of people, personalities, and situations during the school year and the dark hour, it can be said that the MC has gained profound wisdom of both the human conscious and the philosophical concepts that are a natural part of the world. The MC's credentials to having achieved this knowledge is showcased in the ranking up of each social link. A fully maxed out MC will have a vast amount of resources and mighty personas at his disposal for the final climb up Tartarus and ultimate battle against Nick's avatar. This battle is where the fool's journey is beautifully reflected in the game mechanics. The fact that the final boss goes through each arcana shift, and the fact that the MC and his party must defeat each new form before the next transformation, implies that the MC must be knowledgeable about each specific tarot archetype that Nick shifts into. Each form has different stats and affinities, so having wisdom on how each arcana thinks and works is needed to properly counter each one. Not to mention, Igor explains how the procurement of the world arcana is only possible by combining the forces of each of the social links you made in the game. And since the world tarot is the only arcana that retains a positive meaning, whether it is upright or reversed, 
serves as an adequate explanation as to why this tarot has the ability to make the ultimate miracle possible in P3's world, the successful blocking of Nyx from reaching humanity. I think what Mitsuru says to Takaya in the final confrontation is a nice way to wrap this video series up. She says that there is more to the world than our own individual struggles, that it's not up to a single individual whether all of humanity should live or die. Other people have lives around us that they very much enjoy, and even if we're stuck in a rut and our current grief blinds us to the journeys that other people are experiencing, it's not up to us to deny the gift of life to any other individual. Mitsuru speaks from a place of experience of having to overcome painful loss. But knowing that she and Cease have had to face so many trials, yet still choose to fight for the right to live, sets a strong example for all of us. Even when life seems hopeless at times, cling to the family, friends, and or hope that there are still experiences waiting out there that will make our lives infinitely worth living. And with that, thank you so much for coming along on this journey about P3 tarot archetypes with me. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, and consider subscribing for more analysis videos like these. I still have some one-off ideas for P3 that I'll dive into here and there, but for my next series about Persona, I'll either begin covering the P4 characters' tarots, or I'll start analyzing the mythological background and symbolism of the P3 cast personas. I hope you look forward to that, and so until next time, take care. See ya!